today on Styrene Modeler's Haven. Ooh, shiny. I ruined my natural metal finish. I fixed my natural metal finish. I revealed the secrets to achieving a natural metal finish that you can handle and mask. Some of the most beautiful planes to build in scale are the bare metal aircraft that were commonplace from the 1920s through the 1960s. Natural metal finish is unforgiving, highlighting every flaw, gap, and seam line that you did not correct. This can frustrate even the most seasoned modeler, having to sand or strip the finish right off, or worse yet, placed on the shelf of doom. Natural metal finish is the Everest, or holy grail, of aircraft finishes, but when accomplished, can make for a stunning scale model. On a previous project of this Trumpeter MiG-19, and quite by accident, I think I have cracked the code on how to do natural metal finish that you can handle and mask. This process I stumbled across allows you to decal right over the natural metal finish without any silvering or issues, and you can weather it without having to worry about damaging the natural metal finish. Since natural metal finishes will highlight any flaw, prep work is critical. The process begins with filling gaps and seams and priming the model to see the condition of your work. You can watch my last two videos in this series where I break down the process of not only priming this B-17, but filling gaps quickly and smoothly in preparation of the natural metal finish. Since metallic paints highlight even the smallest amount of texture, you will want to wet sand your primer coat with 4000 sandpaper. This will smooth out the primer and remove any flecks of dust or debris. It's okay if you rub through the primer in spots, as the next step will cover this without any variation in the finish. Even if you dry your model with the lint free cloth or hair dryer, water always seems to find a spot to hide in. Give the model 12 to 24 hours to completely dry prior to the next step. Metallic paints need a glossy black base in order to show off their full reflectivity. Even though some metallic paints can give good results over a smooth primer coat, for this technique to work, a good black base is a must. There are many paints that can work for a black base, some made specifically for this application. You can use whichever one works for you. My go-to black base paint is either Tamiya or Mr. Color Acrylic Lacquer Gloss Black. Mix with Mr. Leveling Thinner at a ratio of approximately 70-30 thinner to paint. I am able to build up several thin coats so I do not lose detail by flooding the model with too thick of a coat. I prefer to mix my paints in a separate container prior to loading the airbrush. This allows me to check the paint and make sure it is fully mixed and thin. A simple method I use to see if my paint is thin correctly is to pull some of the paint up the side of the cup. I am looking for the paint to run down the side faster than water would. I don't use exact measurements, but if this is your first attempt, there is nothing wrong with measuring out your ratios. I have found that it is best to shoot the model with the black base in one go. If you try to paint the top side, allow to dry, and then paint the lower half, the line where the two coats meet never seem to blend into each other. The metallic paint will only highlight this. Using anything I can find, I try to find a way to be able to hold the model so that I can paint the entire model in one sitting and also set it away to dry without touching any other surface. My favorite holder is coat hanger wire that I can bend into any shape and slip the ends into any holes, intakes, or other voids I can find on the model. Once painted, I can either hang the model from the wire or place the handle in a weighted cup so it does not tip over while drying. Later, the tiny area the wire did not allow to get painted, I will simply brush paint with some silver paint. Before committing paint to model, I always have a junk kit paint mule. This could be larger parts from another kit you don't care about, an old built up model you are willing to sacrifice, or even a plastic water bottle. This allows you to dial in your airbrush, test how the paint is spraying and drying, and will allow you to see what color your natural metal finish will be. I shoot the black base at 12 to 15 psi using a 0.3 needle and tip. Three to four light coats is what I am aiming for. The idea is to get full coverage, making sure the paint is glossy but not so thick that it starts to fill the panel lines or other details. Don't forget to hit all the smaller parts with a coat of the gloss black as well. 
Once satisfied with the black base, I set the model aside for a few days to fully cure. Even though acrylic lacquers can cure to the touch in less than 24 hours, since this is a black gloss coat, I want to make sure it has plenty of time to fully harden since many of the metallic paints I will be using are hot and that they can craze the black base if applied too soon. It's okay if your paint has some orange peel once cured. The next step will ensure a clean smooth surface on which to apply the natural metal finish. Since prep is so crucial to getting the best possible outcome with metal paints, it's back to wet sanding the black base, this time with 6000 grit paper. Typically it will only take a few swipes to smooth out any trash that may have gotten into the paint. Between the 6000 grit and wet sanding for just a short amount of time in each area of the model, you shouldn't get any rub through. Even if you do, it's not a big deal as most metallic paints won't show any difference if it's just a tiny bit. Like before, set the model away to allow all the water to dry to avoid any issues for the next step. Finally, the time has come to apply the first natural metal paint. For the process that I accidentally stumbled upon to work, we need to start with Alclad polished aluminum. Make sure to fully mix the paint by shaking it until all the mica particles that settle to the bottom have fully mixed into the liquid. It's back to the paint mule to not only test that everything as it should be, but to also see how the finish will look before we commit it to the model. Alcad is airbrush ready, no thinning required. Simply pour it into the cup and you're ready to go. I shoot Alclad at 10 to 12 PSI, again using the 0.3 tip. To ensure a smooth, even coverage, I shoot the paint two to four light coats, allowing the paint to slowly come up to color. Too much Alclad and the reflectivity will start to diminish. You want just enough Alclad to let the black base do its job of allowing the aluminum color to use the glossy black surface to reflect off of. Alclad dries very quickly, and since the coats are so thin, you may be tempted to handle the model. Most metallics, but specifically the shiniest colors, tend to be fragile. It is best not to handle the natural metal finish at this point and keep the model on its holder. Throughout this process, I've been wearing gloves not only to keep overspray off my skin, but to also make sure I don't accidentally get any oils from my skin on the finish from an accidental bump as this would show up on the natural metal finish. Now comes the magic that will toughen up the finish without diminishing its luster. With most natural metal finish brands, they recommend a clear coat to be applied so the model can be handled for masking, decals, and weathering. The issue is that most clear coats either go on too thick, change or ruin the sheen of the metal paint, or worse, will peel right off with the masking tape since the surface is so smooth as the clear does not bite into the surface. This is a common issue with acrylic lacquer clears like Tamiya's and Mr. Color. The solution comes from Alclad, but not in the clear coat they recommend. Instead, it's their clear base. This clear does not have any of the issues mentioned and is super tough, allowing you to continue to work on the model without fear of damaging the finish. But there is a trick to applying this clear coat. Alclad's clear base is hot, and if applied wrong and allowed to flood the surface, it will actually dissolve the natural metal finish right before your eyes. The trick is to apply the clear base in fast mist coats at a low PSI, 12 to 15 approximately. You want to just dust on the clear on each pass. Alclad's clear base dries very fast, in under a minute if applied normally. But with this fast dusting, the clear dries almost instantly, within a few seconds, not allowing the clear a chance to damage the finish. As you build up more and more coats, the clear is no longer interacting with the natural metal finish, so you can progressively apply slightly heavier coats in each pass. Keep the airbrush moving and continue to apply the clear in this manner until you feel the entire model has been fully covered and has enough layers. The clear goes on very thin so you don't have to worry about a thick coat. All right, we've made it over the hump. We now have a natural metal finish that we can handle and mask. Now it's time to mask off individual panels so we can apply various shades of other metal colors. Take your time and use reference pictures to choose which panels you want to mask off. Even though the clear base provides a tough finish to work with, it is still always best to wear gloves when handling the model as to not introduce any issues from oils, dirt, or grime transferring onto the surface. I always start with the largest panels that will make a visual impact and try to make it look random. On many World War II aircraft, 
Flaps and rudders were often covered with fabric and painted with aluminum paint. This left a dull matte finish, so it is always a good idea to mask off these based on your references. Some natural metal finish aircraft had sections of the wing painted in silver paint. This is also something you can mask off and use various shades of silver to mimic. Whatever you feel will best represent the finished product you want is the best way to go. I prefer to mask off panels using Tamiya masking tape. It comes in three widths, can be stored in its own dispenser so to avoid dust on the edges of the tape, and when cut into thin strips, this tape becomes flexible, perfect for masking along a curve. When you've masked off all the secondary panels and you're ready for the second shades of metallic paint, it's back to the paint booth and mounting the model on its wire handle. As you go through the different shades of metal colors, use this opportunity to spray strips of each color on your paint mule before you apply them to the model. Not only as a check, but this can be used as a reference for future builds. You can write on the back of the part the base paints and the name of each color strip so you have a true to color palette. Using the same techniques to apply the first color, I now use a fine detail brush with a 0.2 tip and 8 to 10 PSI so I can control where the paint goes and keep the application tight. If you don't have a fine line airbrush, no need to worry. Simply mask off the areas that you don't want any overspray. Use a piece of paper to cover adjacent panels as you switch colors so you don't get overspray on a previous painted panel. Try to vary the shades dramatically. Use the lightest and darkest of the metal shades that you have available, and various sheens from matte to aircraft aluminum shine. You can use both Alclad and AK Metallics for this. I have not experimented with other brands, so I don't know if this will work when moving forward to the next steps. A great little tip is you can vary the panel shades by using Tamiya Smoke applied in light coats and build up gradually. This also works with other clear coats if trying to replicate heat stained metal, but for now we're just going to stick to the smoke. Don't forget to spray the smaller parts and vary the shades as per your references. Again we apply the clear base to the panels and all the smaller parts we have painted in the same manner as before. Things are moving along now, and you may feel you have finally conquered natural metal finishes opening up the possibilities to all the kits you have in your stash just waiting for the day you mastered this paint technique. Disaster strikes! As you peel off the masking tape, you will see a faint ghost outline left behind that clearly shows where the masking tape was. At this point, you will want to comment on this video and use all the harsh language you can muster. Well, hold on. I promise your model is not ruined. Continue to demask the model and do not attempt to sand, rub, or use any chemicals to remove the ghosting left by the masking tape. Mount your model on your paint holder and get out AK's metallic aluminum. Dial in your airbrush at approximately 12 to 15 PSI using a 0.3 needle. Do a final check using your paint mule and then begin to apply the AK aluminum over the entire model as if you were trying to start all over again. Do not avoid the panels you had masked off. Apply the aluminum in thin light coats and allow the paint to build up as you continue to pass over the model. This is where the fun happens and you crack the coat of natural metal finishes. As if by magic, you will begin to see the ghosting disappear, but the different colors of metal paint on the different panels will still remain. They may change slightly in color or sheen, but you will still see a distinct difference from panel to panel. This is why you want to vary the shades dramatically when you spray the individual panels. What is happening is that 8K's aluminum is going on so thin that it is covering the ghosting, but still allowing the various panel colors to show through, even if slightly toned down a little. This is not unlike the same technique when using a very thin unifying color to slightly blend in camo patterns on scale model paint jobs. The polished aluminum will change sheen a bit just as all the other colors will, but what you will have in the end is a very metallic looking model with panel color modulation. See, I told you, everything is right again with the world, you can retract your comments. Once again, apply the clear base over the entire model after allowing the AK aluminum a few minutes to dry. Use the same fast dusting coats to keep the clear from interacting with the paint as before. Now again you have a model you can handle, mask, detail, and weather, but this time when you mask it won't leave the ghost image of the tape as the AK aluminum and clear base combo does not allow this to happen. 
You can also now apply decals over the model as no additional clear coats are required since you already have a smooth surface. Even the strongest of decal solvents won't affect the clear base. If you wish to do a third round of masking off panels, you can repeat the process, but the more coats of AK aluminum you apply, the more it will cover the various panel variation in color. So there we have it. We've cracked the code on natural metal finish. You now have a great base on which to continue your work in finishing your model build. I hope that the Styrene Haven model natural metal finish technique will allow you to tackle natural metal finishes with a renewed confidence and allow you to try some of those stunning paint schemes that came out of the golden era of flight. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel so you are notified when my new content drops. In the next video of this B-17 series, I will be painting the non-metallic colors of the Warbird Chucky. I will break down the process of using a vinyl cutter to cut the custom masks. This will allow me to avoid having to use most of the decals and apply a more realistic look by painting on the stars and bars, call letters, and other markings. I will also be printing a few of my own decals using a standard inkjet printer for the markings too small to cut masks for. If you're interested in trying out this technique of natural metal finishes, I have provided links in the description to all the products used to achieve this technique. Don't forget to join my email list to get the latest updates on new content, scale model deals, and more tips and tricks. You can find the link to join my email list in the description as well. Please leave your comments in this video as I would love to hear your results as you attempt this process and if you join my email list you can reply to my email and send me pictures of your results. I can post your pictures in my YouTube community board. Thanks for watching.